Hello, and welcome to the Irresistible Marketing Pod, the podcast that doesn't really believe in TMI when it comes to personal branding. I'm your host, Isa Gauchi, your marketing confidence cheerleader and owner of the M. Isa Messaging Digital Marketing Agency for small business baddies such as yourself. Today, we're going to talk about the terror of things going too well. This is because I've been hearing something pretty interesting from clients a lot recently, and it goes a little something like this. I'm so afraid that if I get everything I want, I'll lose it all and I won't be able to survive that. So I talk myself out of really trying in the first place. I've actually had a few clients tell me that this is the exact thought pattern that's blocking them from going all in on marketing their business or their art or their creative venture in the way that they know that they are capable of doing and in the way that they know will be most effective for achieving their goals, for putting, putting their creativity, their healing, their magic out into the world. And to be honest, at first, this one really threw me as, as the marketing confidence cheerleader. And I assumed I couldn't relate. And um, I just told my friend Kristen that I couldn't relate at first yesterday and she burst out laughing. So, <laughs> you know, um, maybe y'all can see some stuff I can't see at least right at first. Because I thought I couldn't relate, um, but that turned out to be not at all the case. Because... Recently, I got so many things I've been wanting for such a long time, and I got them all in a really short period of time. Like, I got some big, big sales. I got some really happy, even dare I say, ecstatic clients. I got some rad creative recognition. I got to have adventure. I moved to an entirely new place. Got to have romance. I met someone pretty dope. Um, I got affection. I got belonging. I got care and support. I got community. I got all kinds of affirmations and validations and stuff I've just been craving and that I assumed once I got it, everything would just be, you know, hunky-dory, smooth sailing. And I got all that stuff, everything I wanted, and my nervous system went absolutely haywire. It went nuts. Um, so <laughs> I was in this weird situation where my life was like a pleasure cruise, but my mind was like a, a horror movie, like a real scary one. Like my chest clenched, my mind and pulse raced, my spine was curling in like just a little potato bug trying to protect all my soft bits from the big scary world. And I was looking for threats everywhere. I was investigating everyone I encountered for the meaning behind every possible muscle twitch of the jaw, every dart of the eye, every subtle vocal change. Where would the danger come from this time? What sort of betrayal would hurt the worst and how could I anticipate it so it could be a little bit less painful when it inevitably happened? Because that betrayal, the ripping away of everything good was coming. I was so freaking sure. So I kept scanning everyone and everything for it, even the good stuff, especially the good stuff, until I asked myself, why? Now that I had received nearly everything I wanted, why the fuck was I freaking out? (sighs) It goes back to my childhood. Every fucking time, right, therapy babes? But it turns out I was just hamster wheeling the cycle of abuse. (laughs) And it goes back to my childhood, yes, but also back to every abusive relationship I've ever had that replicated those earliest connections that I'd known. And because this pattern of abuse had been happening so many times, that it now started to repeat in my own head. And it makes perfect sense because brains like patterns. And this is one I recognize deeply and intimately. So yeah, I'm just going to pause here and give a brief primer or refresher on what the cycle of abuse is. And um, I'm not going to get too into my personal story, but yes, I have experienced uh, various forms of domestic violence my entire life. Um, And I know a lot of my clients are also trauma babes and have experienced forms of violence, be it domestic, be it sexual, be it systemic, be it... um, like backlash and violence just due to the the very identity that they inhabit 
or marginalized identities that they inhabit in the world's reaction to them. So like most of my babes, most of the people that resonate with me and work with me have some kind of significant trauma in their background. So let's just go over what the cycle of abuse is because I bet a lot of you are going to recognize it. Now this, I just want to be clear, um, I'm going to read from a really cool graphic I found from the sayitoutloud.org.au website, and it's noted as being adapted by ACON's DFV project, and honestly, I don't really know what that is, but um, I have studied the cycle of, of abuse, and this was my favorite uh, graphic representation of it. So it's giving it in kind of like a romantic relationship context, but it's applicable to other forms of abuse that cycle through. So anyway, this is how, and this will be linked in the show notes as well if you want to look at this visual representation and get some more background on the cycle of abuse and what it is and where it comes from. Anyway, so this graphic I found explains the cycle of abuse like this. It's shaped in a circle because it's a cycle, so it repeats. And the first phase is the pursuit phase, and I'm reading off of their language. And the pursuit phase is making you feel special, buying you presents, making love, having sex. And then after that is the pleasant phase where the relationship continues relatively normally or like there aren't any problems. And then after the pleasant phase, the tension phase starts where you feel like you are walking on eggshells and you start to adapt your behavior or prevent to prevent an explosion. And then after that, unfortunately, comes the abusive phase, and it could be physical, sexual, emotional, or intimidation. And then lastly, before the circle starts over again, is the remorse phase, where the abuser might deny or minimize the abuse or justify it by blaming you or other stressors. They might feel guilty and say they are very sorry and that it won't happen again. And then we're back to the pursuit phase, where you're getting love bombed and you feel amazing and so cared for and all your needs are being met and then you get to have a little pleasant reprieve and then it's the tension phase again and then the abuse happens again because it's a cycle so um now we're back to me this i'm no longer quoting Uh, (laughs) so basically when i bring this back to the business context um of why after i got the clients the recognition the money uh, i'd been really hoping for for so long It actually really makes sense um, that I associated this with the pursuit phase and then the pleasant phase and that I assumed it was only a matter of time before an abusive phase would kick in. And so I started scanning for threats. I started getting suspicious. I started questioning motives, started looking around for where the danger was going to come from because that's what happens in the cycle of abuse that I was so used to. Um, and actually me freaking out about when the other shoe was going to drop created my very own tension phase. So (laughs) where, um, I had like lived through several situations where there were, was a clear external abuser who was, you know, spinning this hamster wheel. Um, in the case of me getting what I wanted in my business and in my life and me freaking out and creating my own tension phase and waiting for the abuse phase in the absence of an external abuser, my inner critic actually took on that role. So I restarted the cycle of abuse in my own mind, in my own head, simply because I was used to it, which weirdly makes lots of sense. So hear me out. Because like I said, brains like patterns. There's a lot of research on this. And if you can recognize a pattern, you know what's going to happen next, which gives you certainty. If you know what's going to happen next, you um, aren't wondering. There isn't a question. And if you know what's going to happen next, um, then you can control the outcome, right? You can um, behave perfectly and set things in motion to get the outcome. And if you're perfect enough, you'll get the perfect outcome because perceived certainty gives you perceived control. And if you have control over outcomes, things seem a whole lot less scary. So um, it's it's less scary than being, I could go all in on my business and it could still fail. Or I could really believe in my art and no one else would see it. Like that's a really scary prospect for people. So it, it makes sense why people would think that, would, would decide it's better to believe that they can tr- control other people's reactions, right? And that they know how things are going to happen next. Until 
you realize that you're replicating the cycle of abuse in your own head. Until you realize that by doing that, you're actually abusing yourself and sabotaging your business, values, and goals. And you're actually trading a construct that lets you believe you have control over actually achieving what you really want. Are you okay with that? Do you want to pick control over giving your desires a fighting chance? I was not okay with that and I'm not okay with that. But here's the hard thing. If you want to feel more at ease with the good stuff, you have to break up with your desire to control. Because disrupting the cycle of abuse in my own head called for some really drastic measures. I had to rewire some deeply ingrained habits. I had to embrace uncertainty. If I'm no longer replicating the cycle of abuse in my own head, I don't fucking know what's going to happen next. And embracing uncertainty means accepting I don't control other people. I can't control what anyone else does. I have to decide I will take responsibility for my own actions and not other people's. And I have to realize that I'm, it's only possible for me to be in control of me. And even then, I can only control the small percentage of me that's conscious, which isn't all of me. So the amount of control I have over anything in this world is very limited. And who, boy, does that go against conventional wisdom, societal norms, and what business bros tell you to do to be successful? But here's why I think it's worth it and why I'm really in this dance of learning to love uncertainty and chaos and um, just kind of relaxing that grip on believing I can control things I can't. Because if I change my relationship with uncertainty, some really fucking cool stuff is possible. If I don't know what will happen next, the pleasant phase could be followed by a deeply joyful phase, and that could be followed by a massive creative expansion phase, you know? If I put that deeply personal and vulnerable insight or creation out there on the internet, sure, yes, it could be met with scorn and ridicule. Or... It could be met with a fuck ton of admiration, money, and soul level connections with people who never would have found me otherwise. And if I embrace uncertainty and release the belief that I am in control of other people and outcomes, I get to stop blaming myself for other people's actions. I get to stop blaming myself when bad shit happens because it's not within my control and it never was. And if the abuse that happened in my past was not because of anything I did, it didn't happen because I wasn't smart enough to anticipate and avoid it properly. It didn't happen because I was too trusting or relaxed or complacent or whatever. I get to stop thinking I deserve it when people are cruel or do things that hurt, which feels like a kinder way to live inside of my own head than what I was doing with assuming like I just needed to be hyper vigilant all the time. Um, and if I was hyper vigilant enough, no one would ever do anything that hurt. No one would ever have a bad reaction to my marketing or my art or whatever. So I get to stop thinking I deserve it when people do things that hurt. And I get to stop expecting violence will meet my vulnerability. Um, and, you know, marketing your business, marketing your art, mark, like putting your insights and your unique magic out there, that is one of the most vulnerable things you can do in the world. And because I've lived through the cycle of abuse so much, I assumed my vulnerability would be met with violence. And, you know, sometimes it is, sometimes it still is, but not all the time. And sometimes it's met with love. Sometimes it's met with abundance. Sometimes it's met with like brilliantly beautiful surprises and opportunities I never even could have imagined for myself. When I embrace uncertainty, I get to stop feeling like I am always in danger. I get to stop perceiving everyone as a threat. I get to enjoy the good stuff that happens to me. I get to feel deep, joyful gratitude. I get to believe I am deserving of the good things in my life that they're not a fluke, that it's entirely possible they're sticking around for the long haul, that the good things that are coming to me now are just a beautiful return on what I've been putting out into the world this whole time. And that is such a lovelier 
way to exist in the world to experience the good things that are happening than to keep myself locked into um believing i'm just perpetually cycling through the cycle of abuse and keeping that pattern running um just for the the strange comfort of feeling like i know what's going to happen next and feeling like i could do something more perfectly or differently to ever prevent bad things from happening or anything from ever hurting like that is a really stressful way to live my I was living that way for a long time and no wonder I have chronic illness and was tired all the time like but just letting all that go just like breaking up with control just breaking up with certainty is opening up some real beauty and like is making space for dreams that were were so big they never even occurred to me before and I kind of like I love that for me and I love that for you and if you want that if you would like to shift your terror of things going too well so you can actually welcome the good stuff that you want coming into your life if vulner the vulnerability of marketing your business has your inner critic replicating a cycle of abuse in your own head right now I got to tell you, my love, it really sounds like you could use a marketing confidence cheerleader of your own, and I would love to be that for you. And look, I I can't promise to make you an overnight millionaire. Um, That's not my jam of, that's not my style of business coaching, but I can show you how to make growing your business way more fun and way less frightening. And you know, when you are able to have fun in your business, when you are able to tap into your love current, into your belief current, into what you're doing and your people and why it matters, money tends to flow a lot faster anyway. So if you would like to work with me as your marketing confidence cheerleader and no longer be terrified of like getting what it is that you really truly want, you can work with me. Um, I got a one-on-one program called Season of Support or you can book a one-off call with me. Links for those are in the show notes below. Also, if you enjoyed this episode and would like to keep this wacky business savvy and emotional depth and insight and Scorpio sexiness coming your way, show me some love by subscribing and dropping me some stars and a glowing review. That goes such a long way to help others find this rad free resource. And it makes me feel real good to know that y'all are getting a kick out of this content. And um, I'll make more. Okay, love you. Bye.